All right, I ran out of time in the last video talking about the uh, semi-permeable membrane and how that helps develop a uh, membrane potential. So I really want to just go back into that just a, just a little bit, just as a refresher here. I mean, not a, not a long time. Okay, so I have some container here and it has some solution in it, right? And I have some semi-permeable membrane, right? Semi-permeable membrane. Okay. So I have a, contain a container here with a solution of NaCl, right? So sodium chloride on one side, and it's divided by a semi-permeable membrane here. And what I want to do is I want to know what's going to happen if this is, you know, permeability to Na is equal to infinity. Meanwhile, the permeability to Cl minus is equal to zero, right? So I want to know what's going to happen in this case. I want to know what's going to happen in a case where the permeability to Na is equal to infinity and the permeability to Cl is equal to zero. So there's two important forces going on here. And, you know, maybe just for giggles, I have over here a, um, a voltmeter, you know, into both solutions here, okay, into both ends of the solution. I want to take this, um, I, want to, I want to get the voltage here. I want to know what that voltage is. So what's going to happen is the Na plus, or sodium, ions are going to move over and cross the membrane. So Na plus is going to cross the membrane and get, end up over here. Okay, this is just simple diffusion. And diffusion basically just says that if I have a higher concentration over here, things tend to move from higher concentrations to lower concentrations. So since the Na has the ability to move across the semi-permeable membrane, it wants to move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Okay? So that's the first force. So we could call that, so forces, one, we might call that diffusion. That diffusion, right? So we have the diffusion force going on here tending to move things from higher concentration to lower concentration. But we also have, over time, as this occurs, as more positive charge builds up on this side and this becomes more negative, an electrical force develops here, okay? That electrical force is going to tend to pull Na plus ions back across the membrane, back, into the, back onto this side. Because remember, this is going to be more negative, and this over here is going to be more positive, okay? And opposite charges attract. This is just simple physics, simple chemistry, opposite forces, opposite charges attract. So at some point, these two forces, so the first one being diffusion, okay, and the second one being, I'm just going to call it an electrical force. So I'm going to call it diffusion. And, the, and an electrical force. When these two forces balance, okay, there's no net movement. And when these two forces balance, the fusion and this electrical force that I'm talking about, when they balance, you're at resting membrane potential. So that's, that's the story. This is a more condensed and consolidated version of it, but that's the story. When these two forces balance, you're at, you're at resting membrane potential, essentially, because there's no movement back and forth, okay? So with that said, I briefly introduced the NERST equation. So N E R N S T. Okay? So there's something known as the NERST equation. And I said that basically it can be modeled like this. I said it could be VM. So remember that's membrane potential VM is equal to RT over ZF. And that's multiplied by the log of the concentration inside 
or concentration outside rather, over the concentration inside. Okay? So I said concentration, and that's the equation. So yeah, I mean, it's true. It's RTZF log of concentration outside over concentration inside. Now, there is a simpler way to represent it that is more common and that will be a lot easier for you guys to use um, practically. Because if you remember the equation or memorize the equation in this manner, it will be easier to use on exams. So 58 over Z. So basically what I'm saying here is that RT divided by F simplifies to 58. Okay? And then it's just the log of the concentration out over the concentration in. Okay? So that's a simplified version of it. Okay, that's that's going to be useful and that's going to be helpful um, to use it in this manner rather than to use it in a different manner. Now, let's just say for a second we want to see how, how we could use this you know how could we use this to find to find an answer to some to some question about potential? We want to know the we want to know the membrane potential of something. Okay. So the fluid inside the axon can be extracted, and the concentration of ions can be measured. So let's say let's see let's say the concentration outside. So concentration outside okay of K plus so we are do potassium here concentration outside is equal to 20 millimoles right and the concentration inside K plus is equal to 440 millimoles so 440 millimoles right what's the VM well, this isn't really all that difficult. So all we do is kind of plug and chug here. So it's 58. Now I'll give you a second to think about what Z is for K+. Plus. Remember I said in the previous video, Z is the charge on the ion. So this is plus 1 on the K+. Plus. So this is plus 1. And that's the log of the concentration outside, which happens to be 20 millimoles over the concentration on the inside, which happens to be 440 millimoles, right? Now all I'm going to do is plug all that into a calculator, basically. I mean, in most cases, you're going to be allowed to use a calculator. If you're not, um, I can go over some basic stuff with logarithms if you want to. But anyway, just for the sake of this, of this particular question, let's just run it through the calculator. So 58 times the log of 20 over 440. And that's about negative 77.86 millivolts. So Vm is equal to negative 77.86 millivolts, right? So what that's telling us here is that the resting membrane potential, also known as the Vm here, the resting membrane potential, if I can get it on screen here for you, is equal to negative 77.86 millivolts. So that's the resting membrane potential. That's what it's telling us. That would be a simple way of using this um, NERST equation. So I'll come back and do some videos where we actually work in problems involving this equation. And um, hopefully it's helpful.